Hello and welcome back to part two of this pumpkin creation tutorial from cgcookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and now that we have our pumpkin modeled, let's go ahead and see about texturing it. Now since this is a fairly simple thing to texture and it's fairly generic, we're going to be using procedural materials for this. Obviously creating one material for the, for the body of the pumpkin and one for the stem. And so let's start out with the, with the body. And so obviously the first step is to select it and then add a new material to this and we'll just call it pumpkin. And the first thing we want to do is go ahead and pull out a nice kind of light orange pumpkin color. So we'll get something, maybe a little more yellow, something in that range. That ought to do it. And then I want to go ahead and adjust the specularity. The specularity we don't want too much but we also want a very low hard value as pumpkins tend to have you know you see highlights on them but they're pretty they're pretty blurred out you know you don't get any sharp highlights like you would on a hard surface or a reflective surface or anything like that okay so now we have a you know a kind of a pumpkin color maybe we'll add a little bit more orange to this and we want to go ahead and add a ramp shader to this and what we want to do with the ramp shader is make it such that any area that receives light is lighter. So it'll actually help accentuate the, the specular highlights, but it'll also make it anywhere that's in shadow darker. And this will help bring out some of these, the crevices in the shape. And so we can do this with a ramp shader, which we just go over to the ramps panel and hit color band. And I want to go ahead and first turn up the alpha on this first slider. And we're going to change the input over to energy. And now we're going to go ahead and change this black by left clicking on the first slider here. And we're going to change it to a nice, almost like a pale orangish white. Something in that range, a little bit of yellow even. And then we're going to go ahead and left click on the other slider on the other side for the blue. And we're going to make it a nice kind of burnt dark orange. Even a little bit of brown in there. Okay, and now let's go ahead and just hit render and see what we get. Now do keep in mind that I'm using the default lighting setup that I have for all CG Cookie tutorials, if you have downloaded any of the source files, uh, you can also follow the tutorial on creating that exact lighting setup on CG Cookie for the three point lighting rig. Now, okay, so this is looking pretty good, but maybe we've got a little too much light. We want to bring back some of that orange. And so let's just left click on our left slider, the light one, and pull it in a little bit. And actually, we're going to swap places with these. And so you can just first, you know, you select it by clicking near it and then you can just left click and drag to slide it. So I've just swapped places and let's render that and see what we get. Okay now we can see that some of the dark areas are coming in so this is looking really good. Maybe we'll slide the light one back a little bit more, smooth that transition out a little more. Okay there we go I'm really liking that. But maybe it's still maybe it's a little too orange or you know we're not seeing enough orange so let's maybe turn down the the opacity on this and that'll bring in some of the original orange color that we see here. Okay that's not too bad. Maybe turn that back up a little. Maybe we'll just add a little more orange to this. Just kind of play with it until you're happy. There we go that's really that's pretty close. Okay we're gonna go ahead and leave it there although actually let's make this one a little darker We'll make it darker and even pull it in a little more. That way it'll kind of, you know, tighten up these highlights. Okay, there we go. That's looking really good. Now, so we've got that. We've got our specular really close to what we want. Let's go and add a little variation to this. Uh, apologies for the Skype. But So what we're going to go ahead and do is let's go over to the, the texture buttons. As soon as my hard drive saves. There we are. And we're going to go ahead and add a new texture. And what we first want to do is add some, some you'll, uh, excuse me, what you'll notice if you look at a pumpkin, you usually see little creases in there, like almost little, um, like a, a small webs even. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and kind of replicate that effect. And so let's, we're going to do it by adding a Musgrave texture, and then we're going to change it from multifractal down to ridged multifractal. And then we want to turn down some of these settings. We're just going to play with them a bit, take down the offset a little. And we just want to be left with just these little ridges here. You can go and turn down the noise size as well. 
and we'll, we should probably leave it right above that. So let's go back to the material buttons and we're going to go to the map to panel and we want to turn off color because we don't want this to affect the color at all. We strip, simply want it to affect the normal value. As you can see, now we're getting these little creases in here. Let's go ahead and render and just see what we get, see what we need to adjust. Okay, obviously it's not looking very good right now. You know, it's way too overdone. So first off, let's go ahead and change the nor, turn the nor value down to say 0.1 and see what we get then. Okay, that's better. But I feel like it's almost squashed. You know, these kind of, these little ridges that we're looking for, these creases, should almost follow the larger ridges. And so let's stretch it out along the y-axis a little. Actually, we'll stretch it in along the x. And so if you go into the map input panel, you can actually turn the x value up. And this is a little different in that it works in reverse order. So the larger the value here, the smaller it is. The smaller the value, the larger the texture is. So we're, let's just turn this up to three and see what we get. Okay, that's looking better. Definitely looking better. But now I feel like maybe the entire thing is a little too small. So let's go over and turn the noise size. Let's just put it to 0.2. We'll see how we get there. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and leave that like it is. Let's go on to the next texture. Now we want to add some variation to it. So let's go ahead and add a new texture slot and add new. And we're going to add a clouds texture to which we're going to increase the noise depth to maybe about five or six and let's go over to the colors panel and click color band and what we want to do is add basically what could be dirt it could be you know some some bumps on the skin of the pumpkin whatever it may be and so let's go ahead and enable the alpha just so that we can see it because we're only going to be affecting one area and let's select the blue and we're going to change it over to a white the reason being is we're going to be using the nor values and so essentially we're creating a bump map you also notice that I'm moving the left slider over to kind of adjust this a little. So we've got some empty patches here. So some areas will be smooth, some areas will be bumpy. And since we're creating a bump map, again, we don't want to affect the color. You know, pumpkins are one of those things that the skin color is pretty much the same throughout. And so we strictly want to affect the bumpiness. And so I enabled NOR value there. And we can see what we're getting. Okay, that's not too bad, but it's maybe a little much. Let's go ahead and turn the noise size down one, see what we get. Okay, that's, you know, it's not too good. So let's go ahead and turn it up twice, make it even larger, and then we're going to turn the nor value down to 0.2, get it, make it a little more subtle. All right, maybe that's a little too a little, little too little, so we'll go 0.3, and that's looking a little better. So you can see there's some variation in here and whatnot that's really helped bringing that out. Okay, that's not too bad. Although I feel like maybe the creases are a little too sharp still. So let's go back over to the texture panel, select the first one, the map two, and let's change the nor value down to 0 0.06. Just tone it down a little bit more. Maybe that's a little too much. Let's go ahead and do 0 0.08. And really, you know, you can just play with it until you get what you like. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at this and move on to the stem because this really isn't looking too bad. Uh, you know, definitely pass for most things. So let's move on to the stem. And we're going to save the file and we'll just select the stem by right clicking on the viewport. Click add new in the materials and we'll just call it stem. And let's add a nice kind of a dark wood texture or color almost. So, you know, something, something in this range ought to do it. Maybe a little gray in there. Okay, and we want almost no specularity on this. So we're gonna turn that way down. And we'll also increase the hardness a little bit. Since wood, even though it, do, it has very little specular highlight, what does is fairly sharp. And then we're gonna go over to the texture buttons and we're actually gonna do this very simply and very quickly. And it's actually really cool. So what we wanna do is basically accentuate these creases that we have in this by adding some more grain, basically. And so we're going to do this by using a cloud texture and we're going to leave it with just the default settings. Now actually we're going to go ahead and turn it over to hard noise, get even more variation in this. Then we're going back to the materials buttons and we're going to turn off the color, turn on the normal, and we'll maybe increase the normal to about one or so. But here's the important step. 
since we've got the grain going this way, we want to, if we shrink it along the x-axis, let's go ahead and switch this to a flat plane so we can see this better. If we map it to the x-axis, or excuse me, shrink it along the x-axis, we can basically create strands like this. And so let me just show you, it's easier than explaining. Under the map input tab, on the x, let's just turn x up to 6. And so you'll immediately notice what happens, which particularly if I enable the color, you can see we've basically created wood grain. And since this is a cylindrical object that's basically just going straight up, we can make it work. You know, we don't have to UV map it or anything like that. And so let's just hit render and see what we get. Pretty cool. Maybe we want to accentuate that a little bit more. And so let's go ahead and increase the NOR value. Let's just go ahead and jump way up just to see what we get first. Okay, not a whole lot. So we're going to turn that down a little more. And let's see. Let's go ahead and turn the noise size down and then hit render again. Okay, and I seem to be missing one setting, so I'm just going to go ahead and check my test material, which you can see I have here. And in this, you know, I've gone ahead and mapped it the same way color to normal. Okay, yep, that's pretty much it. And so we'll go back over to the regular stem. And we want to maybe enable the color here. And we're going to go ahead and just change this again down to a even darker one, like so, and hit render. There we go, that's working out pretty well. Let's maybe go ahead and let's see what happens if we map this to a tube. Perhaps we can get some better results even. You know, feel free to play with these any way that you wish. Okay, that's not looking too bad. We're just going to compare them real quick, see if I missed one setting. Nope. Okay. Uh, we'll turn the, the NOR value down to about 1 or so and go ahead and hit render. And that's pretty much it. You know, you could go ahead and accentuate this a little bit more or add some more highlights via a ramp shader if you wanted. Uh, feel free to go ahead and play with it some more. Perhaps even take this in and add some multi-resolution to the model if you want to get even more detail on it. But there you have it. That's part two in adding some procedural materials to texture a basic pumpkin. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and we will see you next time.